The topic is stop chasing highs, chase freedom, how to get sober. A lot of people come and they sit right in front of me and they tell me, Pej, my life isn't working for me. I don't know how to stay sober. How do you do it? What should I do? The many different people that I talk to, depending on what kind of cap I'm wearing, I could put on my counselor cap, I could put on my recovery coach cap, I could put on my sober friend cap, but at the end of the day, I like to self-disclose and tell them, look, this is what worked for me. This is how I did it. This is the way I used to live. This is the way I was enslaved to drug addiction, and, um, and I needed some people to, to guide me and get me out of this madness and what I was caught up in for a long time. Um, First and foremost, if a person is on certain types of substances, they might need a detox. So if it's alcohol, if it's um, Suboxone, if it's any kind of opiates, or even if it's benzodiazepines, most definitely there's going to be a detox period. Stimulants and things like that you can detox to from as well, but it's not like um, they're as hard on you as the other ones would be physically. Um, those are more mentally. So once somebody's actually detoxed, then what do they do? How does a person actually stay sober after that? Well, a lot of people require um, clinical help, therapeutic help. Um, they got to work through a lot of their old stuff, whatever they've been carrying, a lot of unresolved issues, things that they've never wanted to look at, things that they wanted to take to the grave with them, things that they didn't know how to process. And once they get into that setting, they can work on and process them, whether it be with DBT, CBT. A lot of times I, I really... Uh, I'm a major advocate for EMDR. The thing that changed my life was the psychodrama. Actually going through a, a very traumatic experience that happened to me in my life, and it was kind of my turning point. But then on top of that, what happens to a person that goes through the 30, 60, 90 days of treatment? Um, or a person that can't afford treatment? Well, how do you get that person to actually stay on the path of recovery, really staying sober? You see, coming and getting sober is not really that hard of a thing for a lot of people. It's how, do you, how does one stay sober? How does one get long-term sobriety? What does long-term sobriety even look like? What is 100% abstinent so sobriety. For some people, you know, there are different paths of recovery, but for me, I need to be off of everything. Anything that affects me from the mind, from the head up, you know, that's mind altering, that's mood altering, I cannot do it anymore. Um, I used to try to lift my spirits and seek freedom from within my soul by doing drugs, but unfortunately it wasn't my soul that I was nurturing, it was my ego. So coming into the path of recovery, I actually felt what true freedom from the bondage of self, as some of us say, um, really consisted of. Because when I'm in self and when I'm in drug addiction, it means that I don't care who I affect and, and how I hurt, and I'll, I'll take from people, I will take advantage from people, I'll lie, I'll cheat, I'll thieve, you know, all of those things. Um, and that's just the way an, an, a person in active addiction or alcoholism will sometimes conduct themselves, if not all the time, right? So the freedom that I got was to actually delve deep within, do the inward work, the inside job as I often call it, and, um, and see what it is within me that makes me think that I always need to turn to a drink or a drug to lift my spirits. Um, if a person is asking me for assistance or help, it's my specialty to try to coach them and show them not just how to, to come and detoxify and get sober in the beginning, but how, what are the next steps? Often somebody needs to go through the process of the 12 steps. A lot of people will go to 12 step meetings, that's great, but get a sponsor that has a working knowledge of whatever book that you're working out of and have them take you through the process of the 12 steps so that you can have that spiritual awakening. And what's, I mean, really at the end of the 12 steps, a lot of people say, I worked the 12 steps, nothing worked for me. I'm thinking like, so what part of it did you work? Because in the end of the 12th step, it talks about being of service to other people. Obviously developing a relationship with some kind of higher power, looking at well, you know my deficiencies, taking a look at my inventory, seeing who's upset me, who's hurt me, how I conducted myself, but later on uh, making my amends to people and then going and giving it to other, giving it away to other people. The feeling that you get when you're helping somebody else, when you see the lights come on in their eyes, uh, it's like no other. For me, it's the big buzz. It's like, it's better than any drug or alcohol that I ever used. If it wasn't working for me, I wouldn't stay. But then also ongoing, how does one continue to want to stay sober? Well, really, it's, you know, for a lot, like if you've had the spiritual awakening as a result of these spiritual experiences that can be had, um, you are in a different mindset, right? You're in a different dimension of your brain. Is. A lot of people call it the fourth dimension as opposed to the third dimension. A lot of people, humanity lives in the third dimension. A lot of humanity uh, thinks that shiny things are going to make them feel good. Money is going to make them happy. 
Um, sex is going to make them happy. Food is going to make them happy. Porn is going to make them happy. All these different material things that they think are going to make them happy. But when you come into this other dimension, it's the realm of the spirit. And um, amongst my own recovery friends, I often, we have conversations where you know who's here to stay and you know who has one foot in and one foot out. Like they may be on their way out because they don't really conduct themselves in a very spiritual way, if you will, if, in a very um, wholesome way. Um, they may be doing things that are underground. They might still be lying and cheating and stealing in the workplace or to their spouses or to their boyfriends or their girlfriends or to their uh, siblings or to their parents. And uh, for me, like I need to be a whole human being by living by certain principles. And that's usually why if somebody comes and asks me for, for help, I tell them there's a lot to be done when we get sober and when you actually uh, implement those styles and that way of being into your lifestyle, then you live a very good life and you, you're current with yourself. You're current with yourself, you're current with your mentors, and you're current with your higher power if, you, if that's how you roll. So um, another thing is uh, if somebody is newly sober and they're really uh, iffy about their sobriety or wondering or not sure if they want to stay sober for a long time, I often encourage them to hang out with people that are also sober. When you go to places where people are still doing certain things, you might become tempted to do them, and that could actually put you into a path of relapse. Um, so you want to prevent a relapse, hang out with people that aren't relapsing or that aren't using actively or aren't going to dangerous places or slippery places. I do believe after a while when you get to a point where you um, have truly found yourself and you're at one with yourself and you're spiritually fit, you can go anywhere, a free man, truly, um, or a free woman, depending, you know. So I know my, myself, now that I've been in recovery for 16 plus years and the work that I do, I often have to go to drug dens. I've gone to um, tents to pull uh, homeless people out of tents that are on major drugs. I've seen my drug of choice. I've confiscated my drug of choice. I've gotten rid of my drug of choices. And, um, and never once did I have a temptation or an urge to actually use it. So I, and I don't think that, you know, I walk on water by any means. I just know that I got to a certain point in my life where that stuff doesn't interest me anymore because um, that's what I used to seek the power within the drugs to do. And now I get this freedom from being on this path. So if you're struggling or you have a loved one that's struggling and um, you'd like me to work closely with you or them, you can always reach out to me and we can figure out some kind of a plan. I do a lot of coaching when it comes to that recovery coaching. Um, and then also, if you ever have a loved one that's struggling um, and you don't know what to do, you're at your wit's end and you need some uh, help, whether it's, be, whether it's with coaching or with even doing an actual intervention, you can also reach out to me. My number is 310-596-9356. My name is Pej.